I have a message for some of you today. And some of you, if you will receive it. It is not my text, it is not my sermon. It is a message for some of you today. That I believe the Lord would have me to say this to you. If you are about ready to give up on your faith, in God and what He can do for you. Don't. Don't give up. God is not finished with you. Are you listening to me? God is not finished with you. He has a work for you to do. And He is going to anoint you to, to do it. He's going to give you health to do it. He's going to bless you with strength that you don't think that you could have again. I want you to receive that from the Lord because that is what God has laid on my heart to tell somebody in this place that God has a work for you to do. And I, He does not want you to quit, to give up, because he's not finished with you. I want you to do something for me now. I want you to stretch forth your hand this way and pray that God will help me to proclaim his word. Would you do that and pray with me? Father, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray God will will be done. Touch this congregation with your word power of your spirit and with the joy of the Lord in their hearts. And may the name of Christ be exalted and glorified in each life today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Some people get sick at the sight of it. And some people faint. But in it is life. It carries oxygen and nutrients to the body after it has expended itself of all of those of the oxygen and the nutrients. It goes through a maze that is called your lungs. It is reoxygenated there and it is sent again through the pump that is called your heart. You cannot live without it. You know what it is. It's called blood. If you get injured and you do not, and it is severe enough and you do not get some kind of a tourniquet upon the area or a bandage to hold it, from, you will bleed out and you will die. The Bible tells us that the life is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. If you find that there is a blockage somewhere in your system that carries your blood, and the blood cannot get to that, that appendage will die. Whether it is a foot or a hand or if the wound is in the wrong place even your head you will die without blood you will die blood sometimes carries with it disease that is because and, and it, when it carries disease it may be transmitted to other people but that's because parts of your system is not operating correctly to clean out all of the things in your blood that needs to be cleaned away. You have in your body physical parts that you cannot live without. God put them there and 
The psalmist said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and I cannot begin to comprehend the, the system that God has created within us. The Word of God says in Leviticus 17, 14, for it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whoever eats of it shall be cut off. And Johnny's going to try to keep these scriptures up there. The economy, in the economy of Israel, there was no atonement, no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. The blood of bulls, goats, sheep, or turtle doves. Blood sacrifice was necessary that their sins might be pushed ahead for one year until the next day of atonement. In Israel, every morning and evening, a sacrifice as a burnt offering was made to the Lord. Exodus 29, beginning verse 38 says, Now this is what, this is that which you shall offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, the other lamb you shall offer at evening. And with one lamb, there will be three quarts of flour mingled with the fourth part of two and a half pints of beaten oil and a fourth part of two and a half pints of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at evening and shall do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now before the priest could carry on their daily sacrifices. They had <coughs> in their daily duties, they had to be sanctified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Leviticus 8, 22 and 24 says, And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it. And Moses took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the big toe of his right foot. Now, <coughs> this may seem to you to be an unusual thing. But it ought to be obvious that they, they had to do something because they, the priests, were not pure before God without the offering of blood. And he brought Aaron's sons and Moses, and Moses put of the blood upon the tip of the right ear and upon the thumbs of their right hands and upon their great toes of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar. The altar even had to be sanctified. The altar had to be purified with blood. Now, do you see the significance in this outward display of the sprinkling of blood the application of blood to the right ear, the right thumb, and the right toe. Do you see any significance in that? Why did God require that? The reason he had to, the reason he did that 
was they were about to go into the tabernacle and to commune with God. They needed to hear what God had to say. They needed to be able to take the word of God and use it to the glory of God. And they needed to be able to go in the power of God through the Holy Spirit so their ear was sanctified, their thumb was sanctified, their toe was sanctified, so that they could be used of God to His glory. Amen. Now all of this was out. All of this was out. It was an outward display of, of meeting God's demand for holiness. It was something that had to be done. It had to be done every day. It had, they had to offer a sacrifice in the morning, the evening, every day. And every day they had to be spiritually prepared to do so. So thus the shedding of blood. Now that was outward. The sacrifices were outward. The sprinkling of blood was outward. So what does that have to do with you and me? That was Old Testament. The Old Testament has been, has been fulfilled in all of the New Testament in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples or examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So those things are for our examples. They give us an example and for us to see that so that we can learn from it. And the New Testament explains fully the Old Testament. It explains it. It, it, makes, it makes it understandable to us. We understand why, the, why Jesus had to shed his blood. Why? Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Now, there are three basic things that I want you to learn. Three simple, basic things that I want you to learn today. First of all, the blood, the shedding of blood is required. We cannot have life, the life that, that the Lord offers without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. If Jesus had not shed his blood, we would be in our sins. There would be no hope. There would be no salvation. There would be no peace with God. There would be no, be no joy in the Holy Ghost. Without the, the shedding of blood, we would all be destined for a devil's hell. In 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, the word of God says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. When Jesus shed his blood on the cross, when Jesus shed his blood at the whipping post, when Jesus shed his blood, when they put the crown of thorns upon his head and they took a reed and they beat his head and they, they smote him, they bloodied him. When they did that, I want you to understand that they didn't know what they were doing but understand that God had a plan and that when, when that blood began to flow, salvation song began to sing out and read to the Lord the God of the way. The blood of Christ is the way that we come to God. That Christ redeemed us means that he paid the price to 
set sinners free from the slavery of sin. Listen, it doesn't matter how young or how old or you are in between. You need to take a new look at why the blood of Christ is so precious. It, it is it set us free from the bondage of sin that we were in. Christ paid the debt he did not owe. We owed a debt that we could not pay. But Jesus paid that debt for us. The debt that we owed for violating the righteous demands of God. It came, the redemption came through the the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed. Amen. The word precious. The scripture says in 2 Peter, it was the precious blood of Christ. The word precious means also flawless, unblemished, without price. When you, when you find something that is worth more than you can even begin to comprehend its worth and could never pay that for it, then you understand why the word precious is put on the blood of Christ. You cannot buy it. You cannot earn it. And we will never deserve it. But it was given freely. It was shed completely. I want to tell you, it doesn't take the full shedding of his blood to purchase salvation. One drop of his precious blood set me free from the sin that had bound me. Praise be to God for his unspeakable gift. So the blood, the blood is required. And the blood has been supplied. Matthew 26, 28, Jesus said, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. John 19, 34 says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came blood and water. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 14 says, But Christ being come and high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. By his own blood. I want you to get that. By his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, not the holy place of earth, but the holy place of heaven. The holy place of heaven. You see, when the Old Testament pre priest would take, they would cut the throat of the lamb. They would catch it in a basin. They would take from that basin and they would sprinkle, they would sprinkle the blood upon the altar. They would touch the blood to the horns of the altar. They would go into the holy place once a year, the holy of holies, and they would sprinkle the blood upon the Ark of the Covenant, and there they would meet with God. But Jesus, but Jesus, I want you to understand, but Jesus, once and for all, has carried his blood into the heavenly holies and presented that to the Father and said, this is the blood of the New Testament. This is the blood of the covenant. God accepted that blood as the supreme sacrifice for the sins of all of us. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Having, a, he said, by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. How, listen to this, how much more? <laughs> how much more, young person? How much more, mom and dad? How much more, grandma and grandpa? How much more? 
Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? How much more? The Apostle Paul said, My conscience is clear. I have walked in good conscience before you. In other words, the blood had been applied and he lived a life that was pleasing to God. Maybe you don't accept what the Word of God says. But you know, that doesn't change it. If you don't believe it, doesn't, it doesn't change it. I can't explain it to you how the shed blood of Christ can cleanse me of all the sin in my life but then you can't explain how a brown cow can eat green grass and give white milk and yellow butter. You can't explain that. <laughs> so I don't have to explain it. What I've got to do, though, what we've all got to do is believe it. We've got to have faith and believe that God's Word is true and what Jesus did on the cross will bring about the salvation of your souls. The blood of Christ Amen. is required. The blood of Christ is required. The blood of Christ is given. But without this last thing, the third, you're doing good so far. <laughs> the blood of Christ has to be applied. Amen. Jesus shed his blood, it was required. Jesus shed his blood, it was given. But if we do not receive the gift that he provides through that blood, and apply it to our life, then what he did for each individual who refuses it, it was done in vain. Amen. It is only when it is applied to my life is it does it bring the results that is necessary. For the protection of the children of Israel, the night the angel passed over each of the blood of the Lamb had to be caught in a basin and with hyssop had to be applied to the doorpost and the lintel of their home. If the blood wasn't there, the firstborn died. That was the way it, they, they had a they had the warning that it was going to happen. They knew that it was going to happen. They knew the Passover had to be killed. The lamb had to be killed. They knew that it had to be roasted. They knew that it had to be eaten. And it had to be with their clothes on and their shoes on. If they had hats, their hats on. They, were, they had to be ready to travel because they were, gonna, they were about to be leaving that place. But that blood had to be shed and it had to be applied. It was never applied to the threshold. Never applied to the threshold. Why not? We are never, ever, ever to tread upon the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. To do so is blasphemy. 
against the Son of God who gave himself. The blood had to be applied. He said, and the blood shall be to you a token upon your houses. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Before the priest could offer the blood of the lamb had to be applied to the horns of the altar and to their ear and their thumb and their big toe of their right side. Leviticus 16, 18 and 19 says, And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. Make atonement for the altar. And shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put upon the horns of the altar round about. He shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his fingers seven times. Seven times his completion. And cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. So if the priest had to do all that, don't you think that the blood of Christ must be applied to your heart so that you can stand before the Lord pure and holy? 1 John 5 Amen. through 7, 1, 5 through 7 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Now the blood is required. Without it, there is no remission of sin. The blood, the cleansing blood is supplied, but the blood must be applied. The blood of Christ will cleanse you from all sin. Brothers and sisters, since we know that the blood of Christ is required for the remission of sin, and since we know that the blood of Christ has been shed on the cross so that we might be saved from sin, and since we must receive the accomplished work of Christ that was accomplished by the shedding of His blood, and that we must invite Him to apply it to our lives, what is stopping anyone from, from doing it? Pastor tells us that he likes to receive gifts. I like to receive gifts. If you can't think of anything to buy, buy for an old man, give him money. He accepts that as gifts. Just say it. Just the pastor's out. Just keep it. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> My wife and I, we, we basically run out of things to give each other, and she's trying to downsize, so she doesn't want any kind of new trinkets, something that she has to dust or clean. So, and we not only, we don't buy cards for each other anymore. We dig out a card that we used before. <laughs> we do that. And, and I'll put money in it, and she'll take the money that I put in mine and put it in hers and give it back to you. <laughs> so now we decided not even to give each other money. <laughs> what? You know, but a gift is a gift. And a valuable gift is something to be treasured. And the gift that God has given us in the person of His Son is the greatest of the greatest of the greatest gifts that there are. Amen. When God offered His only begotten Son on the cross for you and I, 
It was the best of heaven given for the worst of this earth. I thought about that in class, but I didn't want to interrupt your flow. The best of heaven for the worst of this earth. You can name the worst kind of sin and criminal act that there is. The blood of Christ will cleanse it and people will have to Amen. Things in abundance. 
And then super abundance. And then if necessary, super duper super abundance. <laughs> abundance beyond what you can measure. He says, much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Justified. When God looks at you, now when, when, the, when the world looks at you, they may see something different. But when God looks at you, he sees you through Jesus' blood. Right. And he says, they're mine. They belong to me. <laughs> they have been purchased by his blood. They're mine. Colossians 1, 13. Are you writing down these scripture references? Colossians 1, 13 to 14. He has delivered us from the, from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption. Jesus has paid the price in full. It's okay. Jesus, you don't have to pay that price. Jesus paid it. He paid it in full. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9, 4. It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works? Did your conscience ever bother you? Do you ever feel guilty? You ever feel like you're not worthy of the, of the gift of Jesus Christ? Do you ever feel like that you, you just can't get good enough? The truth is you can't. You really can't get good enough, but then you don't have to. That's what Jesus died to, to procure, procure for you. He paid the price that you could never pay. He gave his life that you might have life. He shed his blood so that you would not have to go every day feeling like you've not done enough for God. That you can't pay the price. You can't, but Jesus did. He yes. will purge your conscience yes. from Amen. dead works. Amen. Amen. And then the last. Amen. Acts 20, 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to the flock among you, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Not only, you see, you may not know this. You might not have signed your name. To, to an affidavit saying that you are a member of the church of God. But the moment you said, Jesus, forgive my sin and cleanse me, and you ask him to do it and you believe that he did, you became a member of the church of God, whether you knew it or not. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about the one that has headquarters in Cleveland, of which this, this congregation is a part of. I'm talking about the church that Jesus Christ has bought with his own blood. When you gave your heart to Jesus, you became a part of his church. Amen. The only way to get out of that church is to, is to deny the Savior who bought you. As long as you will be faithful to Jesus, you're in the bond. Amen. Whether you like it or not. Amen. You may not be one or won't be a part of the body because I'm in it, but that's Amen. tough. You're in it, I'm in it. We might as well agree one with another and be united together to, to work against the forces of darkness. Amen. 
and be blessed by the power of God. Amen. Begin to come. 